Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. While Ashley's new alternate devises a strategy to eliminate Tucker from her life, Billy attempts to win over Lily with his charm. Upon entering society, Mariah observes Tessa brimming with professional and personal fulfillment. While humming, Tessa exclaims that her existence is exquisite. She accepts her wife's proposition to increase her happiness. She advises that they devise a strategy to re-establish her presence before an audience. Tessa and her infant are unable to be separated, so Tessa's spouse recommends nearby music festivals. Mariah is confident that they are capable of securing her a position. As soon as she notices Abby and Devon, she calls out to them. She boasts about Tessa's extraordinary versatility and proposes that she be awarded a performance slot at a music festival. She is aware that Devon is acquainted with every individual in the industry. He believes she would be an ideal addition to the festival that they are organizing. They all concur to that. Devon and Abby get a table. He receives a text from Nate, thanking him for the vote of confidence. They thought that they would be celebrating him being back on the board. Devon did not see Lily voting against it coming. All the meetings at work just seemed to be about arguing rather than logical business decisions. He stunned his sister voted against the family. Abby says that's not what happened. Just because she voted against Nate doesn't mean she voted against him. This isn't forever and his sister can be persuaded to see things his way. She urges him to think of this from his sister's point of view. Maybe she didn't want to vote with him to make him pleased. Abby is pleased of him for supporting his sister. He's convinced there is more to his sister voting against Nate than it seems. He has a sense that Billy has gotten under her skin. She doesn't see it, but he knows his sister is susceptible to Billy's coercion and he's capable of practically anything. He confesses that he's not loving working at Chancellor Winters lately. It's a lot of hassle. It was intended to be about creating a legacy for the next generation, but that's all getting lost. He never banked on Billy intruding on matters, and he hates being challenged on everything. A.D. Abby and Devon speak about Lily's behavior, Y.N.R. Billy walks onto the patio of crimson lights. He notices Lily and approaches her. She makes it plain that she will not revisit his suggestion that they work together to run the company. He can take the message. Besides, he's convinced she will come around on her own. Noting his confidence, she confesses that she had a disturbing conversation with Mamie today. Billy wonders if she's starting to recognize that her aunt could be trouble. She won't confess that, but she won't chop up the company she pulled together. Billy reminds her of his notion that they should take the reins. More, primetime bombshell. They go down to the jazz lounge, and he makes some remarks. She taunts him about all the validation he needs. Lily suggests he's trying too hard and suspects something is up. He confesses that Ashley hasn't been the same since her breakup with Tucker. She hasn't been herself and he's afraid for her. Billy's always been afraid of his big sister and wishes he could repair whatever Tucker broke inside of her. They both detest Tucker. Billy wishes his dad was around to cope with this. Looking at the photo of Neil on the wall, she says she knows how he feels. Billy knows he will never be John Abbott, but he's confident that Neil would be proud of her and is walking with her every step of the way. She's positive both of their fathers are there and they toast to that. As they drink, he tells her stories about his kids and reminds her how effective she was at getting them to calm down with just a look. They chuckle and he tells her about how much he wants to stay on her good side. Billy and Lily speak about the company YNR. A.D. In their suite at the GCAC, Tucker and Audra are bickering about diverting capital and marketing spin for all their enterprises. She almost forgot how cold-blooded he can be in business. It feels like Glissade will be able to surpass Jabot. They salute to it. He thought she wished to avoid all the drama of rivalry. She did, but now, believes they can dominate the market. His motives are more suspect. He asserts that Ashley is not his motivation any longer, although he wouldn't mind crushing her sanctimonious brothers. 
Tucker tells her that her desire and ambition give him certain sensations. Climbing on top of her, they make out. Tucker and Audra banter about business YNR. After they have sex, he wants more, but she wants to speak about consolidating facilities. He adores it when she talks dirty. Audra needs food and thinks they need to get clothed for that so they don't get distracted. They agree to rush down to the restaurant. More, Courtney hope on Adam and Sally's future. In the dining room, Tracy admires Ashley's unusual dress and tells her she's pleased she agreed to a bite to eat. When she suggests they order her usual, Ashley desires tequila. Tracy is stunned. The voice in Ashley's head tell her just order an icy tea so she does. Her sister suggests that she leave her phone on because everyone gets concerned about her when she can't be reached. She fills her in on Harrison being home from his ordeal. They didn't tell her about it earlier because they didn't want to add to her burden. Now they can concentrate on her. Ashley forces a smile and curses in her mind. Tracy is positive that she was feeling daunted about speaking to a stranger when she ran off from therapy. Her sister says she just grew skittish and came there to relax. Gasping, she suggests her sister unwind too and order some shots. Tracy believes she's spiraling out of control. If she has to hold her hand to get assistance, she will. But she can't back her up as she conceals behind alcohol. Ashley says her harsh love is just what she needs and offers to reschedule the appointment for tomorrow. A.D. Tracy and Ashley discuss therapy YNR. As they head for the door, Tucker and Audra rush down the stairs. Ashley immediately begins goading them, telling Audra that she could do a lot better than him. Audra thinks that's a novel angle for her. If I were you, I would ditch this daddy issue for good, Ashley suggests, tittering. She insists on going to the powder room on her own. Tucker declares it seems like they have yet another new Ashley. It appears like she hasn't gotten any help. Tracy says this is a private family matter and not his concern. She pleads him to let it go. After she walks off, Audra tells Tucker that this is no longer funny and there is something gravely wrong with his ex. She'll confess that she's freaked out by her mood swings and tells him to stay away from her. McCall agrees to let it go. Can she? More, best new YNR character. They sit at a table and she laments about always running into his ex pulling out the engagement ring. He suggests that one way to keep her away for good would be if she said yes. She's astonished he keeps that on him at all times. He wishes to be ready. She urges him to dig deep and recognize that he doesn't want or need this marriage. He jokes that he just wishes to introduce himself at parties as her husband. When he asks her what she imagined her wedding would be like when she was a child, he attempts to paint a picture of what it could be. She confesses she wanted to arrive in a horse-drawn carriage and repeats they don't need anyone to approve of their relationship. He says they can get married in private. It's about them making a covenant to each other. Audra reminds him it's a promise people break. Taking his hand, she agrees to remind him every day they are together of how much she loves him. He asks her to repeat that and sighs. More, the history of Victor's confinement.